Good morning. It's Monday the 12th of... Ju oh, gold. 12th of... Ju uh, why have you rung now? Honestly, I've literally just started... I've just started the show, dear. Millions of people all around the world. Look, my it's my friend. He's just called. On the, literally, at the moment I was trying to say the date, your little face appeared. Oh, dear. You're not looking too well this morning, are you, dear? I must show my people. <laughs> too late. They've seen you, mate. <laughs> say good morning to the millions of people joining us here on the United... Sorry? There's not four people. Ten million at the moment, actually. Ten million. Thank you. Yes. So I'll see you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming soon because I've got to go tomorrow. So. Oh, okay, dear. Thank you. Bye-bye. There we are. Best friend, Ron, calling in at the worst possible moment you can call in, dear. I have to have this phone here, just in case there's an emergency phone call, you know, from one of our many transmitters all over the world. Good morning. Once again, it's Monday the 12th of June 2017. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk. I've been naughty. I have been very naughty yesterday. And I shall come to that a little bit later on, OK? I'll come to that a little bit later on. I'd first like to start by uh, congratulating a very good friend of mine, uh, Scott Bruton. Scott Bruton, who was in the X Factor um, some years ago now, boys and girls. He didn't get through to the final. He's an excellent singer and such a nice person. He does a little show on a radio station up north, an insignificant radio station up there. It's not really not really relevant, is it, James Dean? So I won't mention the name. It's not a relevant radio station. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I used to do a show on there, a chat show. I did, I did, they used to carry my chat show over there, I think late at night. But it was dropped. It was dropped for being not relevant. So I don't think your little radio station is relevant to me, dear. You know, that little local area. How many people in, in your target service area? It's about 10, isn't it? 10 people in your target service area, James Dean. Is that right? Not, not like this international television programme that you are watching at the moment. Anyway, back to Scott. That's enough about you. Back to Scott. What have you done? By the way, James Dean, what have you done to your hair, dear? You are looking stranger and stranger by the day. You're looking like one of those loony lefties, dear. You know that look. Like dyed hair and strange colours and odd shapes and things like that. Huh? What are you doing to your hair, James Dean? Anyway, congratulations to Scott Bruton. Uh, who was in The X Factor, who has a new job. He says, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to announce my new role as manager of Burnley Football Club. Do they play that every time you walk in? Do you have to wear the little uniform, do you, dear? Do you have to wear the little white shorts and, 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 a, t and, a, and a football shirt? I can't see you playing football somehow, Scott. But maybe you do. Anyway, he is now manager of Burnley Football Club. He says, I will be pushing hard. Oh, sorry. I will be pushing hard for a Champions League spot next season. And hopefully I can bring the club back to its former glory. And in the moment I saw that, my little eyes lit up. And I saw a job opportunity, boys and girls. You, now, whenever you see an opportunity, you must grab it immediately. It doesn't always work out. For example, Theresa May saw an opportunity of calling an election. <laughs> well, um, it doesn't always work out. But you, if you see an opportunity, you've got to grab it there and then, because in a flash, it's gone. OK, a little bit of advice to you there. As a slightly older man, probably, than you, when you see a job opportunity or any opportunity for everything, anything at all, grab it straight away. Maybe, maybe you'll be out a little bit later and you'll see someone you fancy. Or and you look over, or, or, or I don't know, I, I, I might go and talk to them tomorrow. No, nope, you'll never see them again. This is your one and only opportunity of ever getting to talk to that boy or girl over there who you've just seen. Could happen any time, couldn't it? You know, I could walk out this door now and there might be someone out there cutting the grass from the council and, oh, my God, he's gorgeous. 
My nephew don't hang around. Oh, no, 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 no. He fancies a girl he's straight over. Uh, don't matter what age they are as well, according to my niece. He's been chatting up 40-year-olds. My nephew, Honestly, not recently. But in the past, he was in a pub with my, with my niece, his, his sister. He went and sat up, up on a table with this woman about twice, twice and a bit older than him. He was, no, I think he was actually 17 at the time. And she was about 40. And he's gone over and said, do you know, I think you're really gorgeous, you are. <laughs> Come on, Jimmy. What? <laughs> you, if you see an opportunity, you've got to grab it straight away. And I've seen an opportunity in this job. So I immediately messaged Scott Bruton, ex-X Factor and now manager of Burnley Football Club. And I have said, please can I have a job getting the big bath ready for the boys and cleaning it out afterwards. At which point he has replied, you're hired. Excellent. So I may have to move up to Burnley. Now, where on earth is that? Is that up to north somewhere? Is that a safe area, Scott? You know, will I be able to bring my spaceship the Toyota RAV4 up there and it won't be, you know, it won't have the wheels stolen or something like that. I have got those locking nil wheel nut things. I'm not quite sure how you remove those. <laughs> we don't generally find out these things until something goes wrong. Have you noticed that? When something goes wrong, oh, I need to change the wheel. Oh, oh, that's a locking wheel nut over there. How, how do I do that? It's a very good thing. We don't. We ring the AA. We don't need to do these things. I pay as a yearly subscription for a nice little man in a yellow uniform to come and do that for me. How kind. So congratulations to Scott. And I look forward to taking up my job offer of cleaning out the bath before and getting the bath ready for the chaps to, to, to jump in after their little football game. And... At no additional cost to you or the management of Burnley Football Club. I am willing, I am willing, once I have prepared the bath, to actually jump in it and check that the water isn't too hot for the boys. I know, I know. I'm practically a charity organisation myself. I'm going to jump in that bath. And in fact, what I'll do, I won't just jump in the bath. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do this with our elbows. You know, lean over, lean over and, and put our elbows in. You know, if, if I was bending over the pool and put, who, who knows? One of the boys could come in in their uniforms and suddenly come quietly up behind me and push it, it push me in. Couldn't they? Very, very dangerous. So what I'm going to do is once I've filled up the bath and it's got all the little bubbles in it, I've got a nice bubble bath. Oh, yes. Got lovely bar I've got uh, Waitrose own brand bubble bath. What, what flavours do the boys prefer? Is strawberry OK? Or is that a bit puffy? Is it, would the strawberry one be a little bit too puffy for them? What about now? What would, Oh, no, sport. There's probably a sports one, isn't it? That's what all the boys wear, the sports one. So I'll do the bath, make nice bubbles in there, and then I shall slowly remove my clothes just before full time. Of course, add it on any extra time as well if it's there. I'll, I'll just before full time, and then I'll remove my clothes and jump in the bath just to check that it doesn't get too cold by the time they get it. Because I know what they're like, you know. As they're coming off the pitch, they like to kiss and all that. I don't know what all that oh, I'm sending shivers up my back, boys doing that. Dude. Kissing each other on the football pitch. Wherever. I mean, where did that come from, for God's sake? Huh? It's a bit gay, isn't it? Oh, dear. Men kissing themselves on the football pitch. Anyway, so I'll be in the bath, ready for them when they jump on. To, when they jump inside the uh, jump in the bath, okay? Don't worry. Thank you, Scott. And there's no additional charge for that. Thank you. I've been very naughty this weekend. I'll tell you a little bit later. Let's say hello to some early people this morning who are joining us on our worldwide famous broadcast, United Kingdom Talk this morning. Good morning, Antonio Amor. What's that song, Amor? Da 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 Oh, what's that karaoke song? Amor, 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 or something like that? Good morning, Antonio. 
Good morning to the lovely Wendy. Oh, I'm showing a bit too much flesh. This morning. I've just noticed that. Is that OK? Do you want me to do a button up? Is that exciting you too much? This morning? I got told off at the weekend as well. I'll tell you about that later. Oh, yes. I'm not excited because I'm not allowed to excite people too much, apparently. I have been exciting little people this weekend. <laughs> I'll tell you later. Uh, Wendy says, good morning, Chris. I'll be with you a little while, 30 minutes, and then you have to leave. Oh, so early, Wendy. Well, do join us on the United Kingdom Talk iPlayer a little bit later on. It's in the same place as you're watching this show. Don't forget, good boys and girls, if you ever miss any of it and you want to catch up, not everyone wants to catch up, um, but if you want to catch up, it, it stays on there as a recording after we finish live, OK? Some people say, oh, are you live or are you recording? Well, on the screen somewhere will be a little thing that says live, illuminating, I think possibly red. Hang on, can I check? I can check that, actually, on my iPhone equipment. One moment, please. Thank you, those of you who are sharing the um, uh, show on their wall as well. I know some of you do that now, and it is much appreciated. Thank you very much for that. There it is. There's the little live thing. You see the little live thing there? Oh, you can't. Oh, there it is. That, you've got a little red live. If that red live thing says live, then we are live. If it's not on there, you're watching a little recording from earlier, which doesn't make it any less. I don't expect to be people, people to be up as early as I am. I had Mark Cording yesterday. He came along to the karaoke and he said, what time are you doing your show tomorrow? I said, well, I don't know. He said, oh, can you not do it at 9.30 because I won't be up? 9.30, man. Come on. The sun is out there. The sun has got its hat on. Hip, 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 hooray. Come on, Mark. But we are a bit late today, so maybe you're there. I don't know yet. Good morning to Gary Davidson. Good morning, Chris. I have a day off, so enjoying the sunshine. It does look very nice out there, doesn't it? I must say, I should be walking up to the swimming pool a little bit later on after I finish this show. Uh, my sister says, change the music, brother. No. Do, 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 do. Sharon, my sister, that's Sharon Butler there. She doesn't like uh, the first bit of warm-up music. You know, the bit with the flute. Do, 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 do. I love it, dear. I think I might even extend it. I have the capacity to be able to extend that music to two, four, six, maybe ten minutes long. I shall do that, sister. I'm going to make a ten minute version of that for you and send it to you on a compact disc. Oh, yes, compact disc. Good morning to Wendy, who says, uh, Wendy says we need some ABBA. No, I'm not allowed to play ABBA because that would be copyright infringement. And then you get a little message up. I'm sorry, this video has been stopped doing copyright infringement. So we can't do that. Can't do copyright music. Good morning to Gustav, who's keeping the red flag flying, aren't you, Gustav? Good morning, sir. Who says, morning, lovey. What a wonderful day. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a wonderful feeling. Everything's going my way. Yeah, hey, oh, that's woke you up, isn't it? Oh, come on. It's better than waking up to that noise on Radio 1. Boom, 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 Or Capital Radio. Well, they don't actually talk to you. They talk at you, don't they? Ghastly. I can't stand that radio format when you've got a man and a girl who probably don't know each other that well. And all they do is tell ghastly jokes, dear, that are not funny. Oh, no, no. And they chat, chat, ghastly joke, ghastly joke, chat, chat. Ha, 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 ha. And they laugh and they're not even funny. Why are they doing that? What we need someone on there is a bit miserable, but happy. Like me. Exactly. Gustav says, morning, what a wonderful day. That pub, oh, what, I've done that, haven't I? Uh, that promises to be a full of wonder. Got a Jinster's, Jinster's slice in the oven. <gasps> Not a Jinster's pasty. Well, just a minute, I must check how many sins on there because I am doing Slimming World at the moment. I, I think I'm going to frighten you here, my friend. A Jinster's pasty, or is it Ginster's? Jinster's or Ginster's? Incidentally, this program is not sponsored by a Ginster's pasty. I just happened to mention it. I, da I dare to look at this food search. How do you spell it? G-I-N-S-T-E-R. Ginster's. Oh, G-I-N-S-T-E-R-S. Ginster's pasty. Ready? 
How many sins in the gentiles? Remember, men, if you're on the slimmer's world, you are allowed 25 sins per day. Sins are the way that slimming world helps you slim. In a, oh my god. <laughs> ah, I thought so. Well, which one do you want? I'm, I'm gonna I, I'll go for the original, okay? I reckon you're having an original one. A Ginster's original Cornish pasty, individual, chilled, 227 grams each. Remember, you're allowed 25 sins a day, boys. Boys, one Ginster's pasty is 28.5 sins. Get that out of the oven now and bin it before it is too late. Oh, my God, Gustav. I can actually, f I can see, I can hear the cracking of your arteries from here. Where they're getting all hard around the edges. Get rid of that Ginster's pasty immediately and go and eat a banana, dear. Have I had my pills this morning? Yes, I have. 28 and a half sins in one... You've had all of your sins today, plus a few of tomorrow's. Dreadful. Dreadful, dear. Anyway, he's got a ginster slice in the oven, a few bottles of white, white lightning by my feet, because he likes an, the, old drink, the old drink, does it? He does. You haven't seen uh, Gustav on any of our karaoke streams. He doesn't sing. doesn't sing, I'm afraid. A few bottles of white lightning, that cider. Oh, he'd be, he'd be, well, 20 past 10. He would have been, oh, God's sake, let me turn the phone off. There we are. Um, yes, uh, he, he will be drunk by now, unfortunately. 20 past 10, anyway, it's very sad, isn't it? Anyway, he's got, he's got his feet up watching the family on Jeremy Carl. And now I've got you to help me slip into a warm sleep or more like a coma. <laughs> Good morning to nephew De Gary Butler, who I saw yesterday. Um, let's see. Craig Hart. Good morning, Craig. Uh, Gavin and Craig uh, have a day off. Well, I hope you'll be putting it to good use, Craig. Craig and uh, Gavin, wasn't it? Craig and Ga I hope you're putting it to good use. Don't have a duvet day. That is just awful. Sitting on the settee all day long, doing nothing. Find something to do. Go out for a walk. Perhaps you could visit one of the many beautiful National Trust sites. Oh, that's what I've got to do as well. Oh, I've forgotten to do something. Else. My niece had a birthday in um, April, and I've said I'll get her a family National Trust um Membership for the year. And I meant to give her the money for that Sunday, but I've forgotten again. Again, that's twice I've forgotten now. Morning to Dino. Good morning, Dino. Hello, sir. Uh, Adam the Plumber's there. Good morning, Adam the Plumber. Kevin Webster. Good morning, Kevin. Uh, and Duke's there. Good morning, good morning, Duke, who's hanging out of his ass. You've been drinking again, haven't you, dear? I did send you a little message yesterday, Duke. Little Chris, baby. But you didn't reply to it. I'm so hurt and disappointed. Anyway, they're all the people with us this morning. Um, so my sister and her husband came over on Saturday night this week because we had a bit of a do yesterday, which was really, really nice. So they got here about half past seven on Saturday night uh, and she wanted to come to karaoke. She said, how do you fancy two extra people coming to your karaoke tonight? And it just, honestly, it just shows how much attention people pay to my shows because you... As a regular listener and viewer, know already, we don't do karaoke on Saturdays. Uh -uh. Do we? No. There was no karaoke, I'm afraid. It was just me doing a tiny little bit of DJ and a little bit of a chat and uh, a drag show over at Central Station. So, unfortunately, uh, they didn't come to that. They wanted to come to the karaoke, but no karaoke on Saturdays. Uh, it takes them about uh, three, three and a half hours to drive. That's that's how long it takes me when I go and see my sister. And, of course, uh, it takes them that just as long and come down this way as well. Uh, so they stayed. They got here about half past seven. I think I made them a cup of tea. Then I went to work. Uh, a great night at work on Saturday night. I do most, almost all the Saturdays now at uh, Central Station, where I also host the karaoke tonight from 8 o'clock and Friday nights from 8.30. And uh, it was the best Saturday so far of the year, I have to say. We had an excellent cabaret at Victoria Sponge, otherwise known as Paul. Now, if you watch the karaoke streams, you will have seen him on there as well. He's quite, um, he's a thin chap, looks around about 20, 27, 28 years old. 
Uh, and you see him on the stage as a man when he's doing the karaoke. But uh, on the Saturday night, he was working he, and he was doing drag. And an excellent, excellent show. A really, really good show. The be And the best audience reaction of the year from any of the shows, to be honest. And some of them, you know, they charge twice as much as him. No, he's, and he's such a nice person. He's very, very inoffensive. Now, often, quite often, sometimes, and most of them are, want, don't want to offend anyone, but there are always going to be people. There weren't any Saturday, I have to say that. But there's generally someone in the audience who, um, who's there, uh, you know, waiting, waiting to be offended by something, and then they start shouting out, and I'm like, oh, just shut up. If you don't like it, just walk out the door. We're not interested in your comments. This is a show. Quite often... The person you see on the stage is nothing like the person who's sitting, you know, who, who's not in that outfit. It's a show. That's what it is. But people don't get that. It's it's unbelievable, the stupidity of people who are permanently offended. And I've gone on and on so many times about this on the show. But there weren't any on the Saturday. There weren't any offended people on the Saturday. And he was fantastic. He was really good. So top marks to our entertainer, um... Uh, Paul, his name's Paul Stone. Paul Stone, who was doing the drag at Victoria Sponge on Saturday night. Um, I finished there at 12 o'clock, uh, came home, got back here around about, um, I think it was about 1, 1.30, at which point I was able to have some of my very, very tasty corn stew, which consists of cubes of corn, uh, roast onion gravy, uh, onions, peas, and chopped up carrots, all in a in a um, what do you call them? You know, a, a slow cooker. Now I had intended to have that before I went out at like uh, about half past seven, but it wasn't quite done. I think I, I didn't I didn't put it on till about two o'clock. And really, you want something like that in there ten, maybe twelve hours, even something like that to give it to give all the all the nice uh, different flavors time to combine. So I had some of that when I got home, and it was delicious. But the blooming buttons come off the. Um, off the slow cooker. And it was a good one as well. Panasonic. I thought, well, I won't buy a cheap one. Because, you know, you buy cheap, you buy twice. It, it often happens. So I bought this Panasonic one from Amazon, actually. I, I, I think it was just about over about a year ago. And the button's just fallen off the front. <laughs> and uh, my mate Ronnie says, well, you'll have to get a new one. I said, I will not have to get a new one. I'll try and fix that first. So I got a bit of tape. <laughs> I've got tape and super glue. So I, but what I did is I, I put the super glue around the sides and tried to kind of push that. This is while it's on, incidentally. So the, the 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 wall of it is quite warm. It's not so hot you can't touch it. It's just hot. So I put the glue around the outside, this blooming super glue, which of course then dripped down onto the worktop. Oh god, this stuff there. Um, and then I got a bit of uh, electrical tape to to hold it on there. Uh, and in the uh, when I got back at night, I thought, oh, I wonder if that's stuck. I took the table and the thing just fell straight off again. <laughs> Chris Ridden's DIY services. Oh, yes. Available for your house now. Anything you want fixed? A shelf put up, light bulbs, electrical work, plumbing, gas engineering. I do it all, dear. £100 an hour. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, um... I'll have to, I'm going to have to buy a new one of those, I suppose, because we couldn't fix that other one. Uh, let's have a look here. Dum, bum, 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 bum. Easy, it was an easy journey in and out yesterday as well. No trouble at all. I think it took about an hour and 15 minutes to get to work. Tonight, it'll be about an hour and 52 hours. Some, for some reason, the traffic's got bad since Easter. Very bad, actually. Very bad. No reason for it at all. Um, so I got in and out all right. That was fine. Uh, in the morning... It was very nice. Got up as usual at 7.20. I got, she knows, excuse me. Got up at 7.20 in the morning. I was so pleased that my sister came to church for me Sunday. For years and years, I've gone to church on my own, ever since mother died, actually. Uh, although, you know, I, I sort of went to church up to about 20, 23 years old, maybe. 23 years old, I think, 24 years old. And then I stopped and I started going again about seven or eight years ago now. But since I've gone back there, I've been on my own. You know, no one ever to sit next to me, other than the people that are already in the church. So my sister came to church with me, um, and, and my aunt and uncle, my, my aunt died um, uh, this year. 
Or was it the end of last year? Auntie Shirley, I can't remember now. Auntie Shirley, I think she died. Was it end of last year or beginning, or sort of around the beginning of this year? Anyway, when I went to Australia a couple of times, they came with us there. Because, because there you go, you see, Shirley and uh, Uncle John. So that was quite nice. But my sister came Sunday, so that was really, really nice. And she sat next to me um, and met Vivian. She met Vivian, who I sit next to each and every week at the front of the church. Well, first, first one back. And uh, she met Vivian, and that was all well and nice. Although Vivian wasn't keen, uh, well, neither was I, actually. We were a little bit horrified by the psalm this week. Now, the psalm is a bit in the mass, which is in between two of the readings. So you have first reading, psalm, second reading, alleluia, gospel, sermon. I, 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 I could reel the whole thing off if you want me to. No, didn't think you did. Um, so what is wrong with my nose? Just a minute now. <laughs> oh, maybe that'll sort that out. I think there's a little hair. There's a little hair which is rubbing against the inside. Is it my spectrum? Sleptum, selptum, something like that in between the nose there, whatever it is. And the psalm is usually like, there's there's a bit where everyone sings, la da 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 da, like that. And then there's the verse which one person sings in the choir. Da 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 da. And then you all sing again. It's all like that. Different tune every week. But this one was not like that at all. There was a line, then everyone sung, and then a line, and then everyone sung. And it sounded like a blooming jazz number, dear. Very disappointing. And I got the old nudge in the ribs from Vivian. And she looks at me, she looks at me down her glass and she doesn't have to say anything because she is thinking exactly the same as I think. <laughs> and then not only that, when they played the Gloria, the organ kept, the organist kept it in the wrong notes, dear. At the beginning, it was a different Gloria to the one we done last week. I don't think they were used to that one. A little bit more practising, if you don't mind, organist. Corpus Christi Church, Wokingham. Can we have a bit more practising? We can't have bad notes being played out. And once again, uh, you know, Vivian looked round and I looked at her. We just nodded and carried on. <laughs> so it was lovely. Really, really nice for my sister to come to church with us. Um, I did mean to show her the town centre. Our town centre here in Bracknell is being rebuilt. Now, they've been at it now for two years. And in three months' time, it opens. And I'm telling you, I, I can't believe how quickly some buildings come up. I think it's been about two years. They started by flattening the old shopping places, the old shopping centre, most of the shopping centre, not all of it. And the new one has built up and, and it's, it's almost done. It's almost done. I don't think it's going to be very long now before the actual shops move in there. I think we've got a, a Primark going in there, a Phoenix. Um, there's a Marks and Spencers, big, big shops. We've got a wonderful town centre being built here in Blackdown. Oh, you must come, dear. You must, we're going to do, I think we should do coach parties. We do coach parties yeah, with, with various pickups around the country. I know some of you up north want to come down and you can visit the shops at Bracknell. How wonderful is that? I wonder, you know, I do wonder, as one of the main stars living here in Bracknell, will it be me that they ask to cut that ribbon? I hope it won't be outside the Primark. Maybe the Phoenix. I don't mind doing it outside the Phoenix or something like that. Not the Primark, dear. I'm not doing that one. Are you joking? <laughs> I think they might be. I, I expect the phone call, phone to ring at some point. And, you know, oh, hello, is that Chris Reardon from United Kingdom Talk? Yes, it's Bracknell Council here. We wondered, as, as you are the biggest star in Bracknell, would you be willing and able to assist us with cutting the ribbon on the... At which point I would have to say those immortal questions... Immort that immortal question, how much? We can't be prostituting our services out for nothing round here, dear. Anyway, I meant to show my sister the town centre, uh, which is known as the... It's going to be known as the Lexicon. Now... I don't know why, but I don't like that name. Whether it's the fact that it's got an X in it or something like that, I do not know. But I don't like the name The Lexicon. It's got a nasty ring to it. 
I don't know why. It really has. Adam wants to know, can we do coach tours of the United Kingdom talk television complex? Well, I mean, well, the thing is, you know, for a day's tour, I don't think that would be long enough to visit all our studios here. You'd probably have to make it a week. Maybe we could set up like a little holiday centre here. We had little chalets and a few caravan dotting around here. And we could make it a week's thing, perhaps, Adam. Christina's getting excited. Yippee, shopping holidays in Bracknell. I'm liking the sound of that, are you? We could have our own airline, United Kingdom Talk Airways, and we wouldn't have any of that mucking around that we do at airports. I hate flying. No, nope, we won't have any of that. What I would do is you would drive directly to the plane... The bum of the plane would open up. You would drive your car on and just sit there. The plane to take off. People will come round with teas and coffees. You'd have a full meal on the plane. Not like on British Airways economy now. A sandwich and a fun-sized Mars bar. Oh, dear. What has happened to that airline? It's disgusting how, that, how that's happened on there. Really awful British Airways. Never mind. And I had such, if you've been with the show for a while, you know that I've always flown British Airways. The five trips I've made to Australia, I've been to Israel, Florida, all on British Airways. Fantastic service. But that's not the not the opinion that I'm getting now from a lot of the staff who work there. And we, most people know someone who work on British Airways. It's terrible. Morning to Shania on the Isle of Wight. You must be tired now, my darling. You've had the Isle of Wight Music Festival, haven't we, Yes, finishing with Rod Stewart last night. Do you think I'm sexy? Do you think I'm sexy? Yes, I want you now. The words might be quite wrong there. Rod Stewart was there last night on the Isle of Wight, wasn't he? Mm. Uh, morning to Peter Hyde. Our septum, that's the thing in between your nose. Yeah, I think there's a little... It's, it's stopped now. I think a little hair may have been irritating the, the septum of my nose. Good morning, Peter. Uh, Kim Flight's there. Good morning, Kim. Who says, glad you had a good weekend with my best friend, Sharon Butler, who is, just happens to be my sister. Yes, we did. We did. Good morning, Christine. Uh, Christina is in uh, Portsmouth. Oh, you're not too far down the end of the A3 there, aren't you? Morning, 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 morning. Um, good. Peter says, let's do a United Kingdom talk coach trip, Chris. It would be great. <laughs> And would it be all inclusive, Christina says? Ah, well, uh, probably, yes. I think that might be an idea. We might do all inclusive and also pay as you go. For those, you know, who might be wanting to save a little bit of money because we, we haven't all got... We're not all rich, Christina, like yourself, darling. I mean, you're saying all inclusive. It, would it be an all inclusive caravan park? Are there, are there such things, all inclusive caravan parks? I don't know if they are. I have to say, on the caravan parks that I've been to, uh, if you go into the restaurant, and I see I don't really like to eat out that much. Um, I'm, I'm so fussy with food. That's why I like caravans so much. You just take your own food. Do what you normally do. You haven't got to eat any anyone else's chips or anything else like that. Not that you should be having chips. Anyway, should you, eh? Naughty chips. So many sins in chips. Anyway, uh, back to this then. So, uh, let me see, where am I on my little list area? Uh, right, so got back home from church around about 10.50 in the morning. At 11 o'clock, my nephew's little family arrived. That's Gary Butler, Stacey Butler, Olivia Butler, Harry Butler and Evie Butler. And they all came to my house and started playing with the cat. I think Stacey actually was a little bit, she was a little bit horrified at how the cat was now. Because the cat... She, 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 she does odd things now because she's very old. Most of the time she walks around in a circle, round and round. I mean, literally for hours, round and round and round. And she, sometimes she gets really fast. I don't know why she gets fast sometimes. Faster and faster. And she goes so fast she falls over sometimes, bless her up. Other times she could be just staring at the wall like that. Because she's got, I think she's got dementia, my, ta my cat. Poor thing. Um... And I think Stacey was a little bit horrified. But but she does react to you. If you put her in the garden and start stroking, she just she does react to you. And um, Harry, who's my great nephew, he's four years old. And Evie, who's uh, five years old, they wanted to uh, go in the garden and give her a bit of, a bit, bit of a stroke. So they did. Brought the cat out in the garden. I think she liked the fuss, to be honest. So that was very nice. 
Um, and then we went to dinner. Now, we were celebrating my Uncle John's 80... I think possibly 86. I think it was his 86th birthday. Uh, and it was at the Sands... Sand Martins Golf Club, which is in Finch Hampstead. Now, that's as about 15 minutes drive from here. I'm very, very close to it, but I've never been there. So I typed in the coordinates, the postcode on my sat nav equipment and uh, off I went. Well, we spent the first <laughs> 15 minutes going up and down the Finch Hampstead Road. Up and down I was going. I got right to one. And then we found a golf place. And I thought, no, that doesn't look like the one. So we carried on, got to the end of the road, turned around again, come back again. And then we went into this golf place. I said, is this where you are? And he looked. He said, oh, no, everyone comes in here. He says, what you haven't done is turned. Uh, you, you need to go past the petrol station. <coughs> Not the petrol station, the Ford garage. And then it's on the right. So I turned around and went down there, went past the foot past the Ford garage, over the roundabout, carried on, no golf course. At which point my phone rang. And it was my sister. She said, oh, you should have turned right at the roundabout. I said, well, that's not the Finch Hampstead Road. She said, well, well that, that's what our sat nav is telling me. So I don't know. <clears throat> Possibly I might have put in the wrong postcode. I don't know. I doubt it. But my sat nav certainly wasn't telling me to go down that road. Anyway, so then we turn around again. I went down there and then we turned left and there it was just on the right. What a beautiful place. <coughs> Excuse me a minute. <coughs> that golf... Do you know I might have to finish here? Hang on a minute. I'm getting all, all mucus here. I wonder if it's because it's hot in here. Oh, no, we've got a high pollen count today, haven't we? It might be that. Um, uh, absolutely stunning. Look it up. Sand Martins Golf Course, Finch Hampstead. It's beautiful, beautiful, went in there, parked up, went in, um, and the dinner was up the stairs, now, uh, Olivia, who's my nephew's little girl, uh, is severely disabled, and she's got this pram with all equipment in it, like oxygen cylinders, a uh, little machine what sucks stuff out of her mouth, well, I don't know what that's called, a very good machine, and, um, can you tell us where the lift is? No lift. Oh, dear. And this was upstairs. Of course, you don't, I suppose. This is something that disabled people have to deal with every day, don't they? You just don't think. You know, we don't. People just don't think, I suppose. And you can't blame them. It's no use, like, it would be no use, for example, standing at the, the bottom of the stairs, shouting and all this, you know, the rights of disabled people and all this, that and the other. No, there is just, how, how is that going to help? It's not, is it? Anyway, I mean, she didn't, don't get me wrong. My, my nephew didn't start screaming and shouting. But um, manager came in and um, he offered staff to help lift the, lift the, the pram up. But we didn't do that. Uh, my uh, my sister's husband, he took part of the front part of the pram. Uh, I think. I think my nephew took the other part of the pram, while um, while his wife took uh, Olivia, the little baby. It's not a little baby; she's two now. Uh, carried her up the stairs, and, and and we got up like that. So I mean, that was all sorted. But you would think somewhere like that might have like a a disabled. Uh, would they do have a disabled chair? So if if you as an adult. You know, you, you, you have to get out of your wheelchair, get on the chair and then go upstairs. Not quite sure how you, I suppose someone would take the chair up then, there with a disabled chair and what have you, wouldn't they? Uh, so we got up there and everyone was there and it was a lovely, lovely time, uh, of course. And then I got told off. I got told off because you know what I'm like with children. I am as mad as them. If there are in children in the room and there are adults, I'm on the floor with the children. The adults, oh, yes, what do you think about the election and all this? And that? Oh, please. Oh, so boring to me. <laughs> I am on the floor with the children. And there are there are six children, um, little ones in my life, really. There's Evie. She's five. There's George. He's four. There's Harry, he's four. There's Emily, she's three. There's Olivia, she's two. 
and there's baby James, who is two months. Okay? So, out of those six, James, too small to do anything at the moment, other than a little kiss and a cuddle. So we remove him there. And Olivia, unfortunately disabled, so she can't do a lot of the things the other one does, which leaves me with four, okay? Now, the thing is, if I muck about with one of them, the other three come along and want that to happen to them as well. So yesterday's thing I was doing was picking them up by their shoes and holding them upside down. <laughs> That's what I was doing yesterday. And it started with Harry, who comes over and he asks for the particular, uh, what should we call it, torture. He asks for the particular torture to happen. So he comes up to me, is Chris, Chris, he calls me Chris Reardon, actually. Chris Reardon, Chris Reardon, <laughs> he does. Chris Reardon, Chris Reardon, he comes up and he says, can you hold me upside down, please? I said, yes, of course I can. So he's kind of doing that. I said, right, no, lay on the floor. I'll pick you up by your feet. So he's laid on the floor like that. The arms are like that, ready to be lifted into the air. <laughs> Wrong end. So I grabbed his feet, hold him upside down like that. And he's laughing his head off. He said, do TikTok. So then I start moving him like I see, like a pendulum, you see? Tick tock, tick tock. So, of course, as soon as one of the others have seen this, they're over. You know, Evie's straight over. Me next, me next, me next. So I carefully put Harry down. And they know to put their heads in such a way that it doesn't get ripped back and break their blooming neck, dear. So I picked up Evie, did the same thing. And then George came over. George comes over. He says, can I, can you do that to me now? Lays on the floor. Now, George, slightly different to the others. So you're swinging him. And then when I went to pick him down, he wouldn't put his head the right way. And I had to hold him in such a way and gently move his head forward, you know, so that his neck's like that rather than like that. Because you can't, can't put him down like that. He'd just snap the neck. And he kept putting his head back. And of course, now he's starting to, starting to, ah, 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 ah. I said, put your blooming head forward. But he wouldn't, so I had to gently push it with my foot as I laid him back on the floor. Now, Emily, she's the little girl there. Uh, we, we can't do that to her because she dislo dislocates limbs easily. It's happened already. Not with me, with, with other people. So you have to be very careful with Emily. So she can't have that. So with her, uh, she just gets picked up and cuddled. So while I'm doing this, and then Auntie Marion came over. You're exciting the children too much. I was told off. They are. <laughs> I am exciting the children too much, apparently. And I had to stop. Told off. 54 years old and I got told off by Auntie Marion. Dear me. And of course, Cousin Helen, as usual, judging me. Cousin Helen, all she does is judge me all the time. You can see her looking over, you know, not happy with things I do all the time. And is constantly criticising, not me, but other people as well. Cousin Helen, strangely enough, is the daughter of Auntie Marion. So there they are, sitting there, you know, like that. Oh, please do me a favour. You go and have your adult conversations. I'm having fun with the children, thank you very much. I got told off. <laughs> Good morning to Stephen, who's with us this morning. Let's just pop back on some of those messages. Otherwise, we get too many coming down to read in one go. Um, Gustav says, uh, Tours of the Mirable Studios. Can we come and see it? Makeup, costume department, wig department, the cameraman and technical department, and you could make a couple of quid selling cream teas. Sign me up. Especially if we get to meet TV personality and head of light entertainment, talk radio sensation. James O'Brien. I'm not having that miserable git on here. Oh, he's so miserable. Does he ever... Can you just imagine him as a father? Well, he is a father, isn't he? I feel sorry for his children. Is he like that at home? Just miserable all the time. Miserable, miserable, miserable. James O'Brien. No, thank you. Not here in the miserable studios, darling. Adam says, be like EasyJet and have a different brands like United Kingdom Caravan Park, United Kingdom Flights, United Kingdom Talk Hotels. I like it. <laughs> Back to the story. So that was mucking around with the kids. Uh, then I went on the balcony. I tell you, this golf, this golf course is stunning. Please type it into Google and have a look. 
Sand Martins Golf Club, Finch Hampstead. You look at the pictures. Cousin Simon's outside. Simon's a lovely chap. Uh, he lives in Abu Dhabi. Unfortunately, uh, he's been there 15 years, but he's just lost his bank job, uh, unfortunately, there. So he's going back to live in Australia. Uh, he's not Australian. They moved, they emigrated there in the early 80s. And made a, 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 and they've made a good life of themselves, um, my, uh, uh, my cousins and things there. It was Uncle John's birthday, as I say. Now, Uncle John was, is the father of Simon and Vince. Vince is in the police force in Australia, very high up um, in the police force, and they've all done really well there. Uh, so Uncle John's birthday. Uncle John was the husband of Auntie Shirley, who died, um, it was either early this year or late last year. I can't quite remember now, sorry. Um, and it was his birthday, you see. So uh, let me think, what happened then? So that was a little chat there. Uncle Paddy was there. Oh, do you want to see a picture? The, here's a picture of all the people that were there yesterday. We kind of did a, a family picture. There we go. Look at that there. All right. Now, can you spot me? Where do, where am I sitting? Huh? Where am I sitting? Where, I am not an adult. I do. I refuse to become an adult. There I am on the floor there. Starting left front. OK, left front. That's Emily on the left there. Uh, there's Harry looking up. He's looking up there. Harry there. Next to him is George. In front of little George is Evie. I'm next to Evie. Uh, I'm not quite sure whose children they are on the right there. If you go to the middle section, on the left is my nephew Gary. There's his little girl Olivia. Okay, Gary is also the dad of Harry and Evie in the front there. The girl in the red top, smiling as always, is my sister. There she is, sitting there. Bless her heart. In the middle there is Uncle John with the checked shirt on. It was his birthday. Next to Uncle John is Auntie Marion. Auntie Marion uh, also lost her husband this year, Uncle Terry. He was a wonderful man, Uncle Terry. Always happy. He used to make his own beer. And it was, re it was really strong, apparently. Uh, next to Auntie Marion, that's my niece. That's Tracy with baby James there. OK. Going back up then. At the back, starting from the left, is Stacy. She's the wife of my nephew. Gary. Next to Stacy is Martin. He is the husband of my sister, Sharon. Uh, not sure. Is that? I can't quite see. There's someone there. That's Vince. OK, Vince at the back there. You can't quite see his face because of the, the light coming in from the window there, I think. Uh, next to Vince is cousin Helen, who judges me all the time. Cousin Helen. Next to cousin Helen is Benjamin. Benjamin is the husband of my niece, Tracy. Behind Benjamin is Uncle Paddy. There is Uncle Paddy. Next to Uncle Paddy is Cousin Simon. Simon is the son of Uncle John, whose birthday it was. And Vince, also, who you just saw there, is the son of Uncle John. Uh, next to Simon is... Martin Devlin, that's Martin, he's my cousin as well. And next to Martin is his wife there. All right, so they're all the people there. Ah, uh, oh, those two people, oh, okay, so the two people, bottom right-hand corner, the two children there, I think they're the children of Martin, who's uh, directly behind them. So that's the, that's the family picture from yesterday. And it was such a wonderful time yesterday. It really was. It was such a lovely, lovely time. Uh, Gustav says, is it, is it the green room of the Jeremy Carl show? <laughs> Let me tell you, you would never see any of those people on the Jeremy Carl show. I'm telling you that now. Aren't they ghastly, those people? Where do, these people actually exist, you know. Those Jeremy Carl people actually exist. Aren't they awful? Why would you want to drag your mother onto the show? To ask her to do a lie detector test if she, to find out whether she slept with your boyfriend. You know, even if he's gay. <laughs> Let me have some more tea. This is stone cold now. Ooh. Delicious. 
So we had some speeches and all that, and then dinner came. And this is where I've been very naughty. Very naughty. The dinner looked and smelt delicious. We had It was a carvery. So there was the items of dead animals, waiting for people to eat those. I, I steered clear to those, as usual, dear. Just a few weeks ago, they were running around in a field. But anyway, so I went straight over to the vegetables and the roast potatoes, which were absolutely delicious. I had five roast potatoes, two Yorkshire puddings, some roasted vegetables, which look like they've been done in some sort of um, butter or oil or something like that. A bread roll. A bowl of eaten mess. And treacle sponge and custard. Now, on a Slimmer's World diet, it's not a diet, on a Slimmer's World lifestyle thing, that's not good news. You heard me at the beginning of the show. I said we are allowed 25 sins per day. Yesterday, I had about 50 <laughs> in that one meal. Oh, my God, it was delicious. So, But, but, I have been saving up sins all week for this day. Because you can do that. You can save up sins. So I did. <coughs> This week, I had zero sins on Tuesday, zero on Wednesday, zero on Thursday, zero on Friday, two on Saturday, and about 50 yesterday. So I think I'll get away with that. Anyway, it remains why I was very, very naughty, eating all that food. But I tell you what those potatoes were to die for. Adam reckons it was 200 sins. I don't think it was 200, Adam. Come on. Not 200, surely. <clears throat> there was no other choice, though, unfortunately. You know, that, that was it. So I really, really enjoyed that. And I do hope, because tomorrow is Slimmer's World Day. Oh, yes. I'm so much looking forward to my way in tomorrow. I set myself a bit of a target of three pounds. You remember I lost three and a half pounds in my first week. I set myself a target. Of three pounds to lose this week. Have you worked that out? Are you telling me that was 200 sins yesterday? Really? Or is that a joke, Adam? Do you let me know. Do, is that what I'm supposed to have eaten? 200 sins yesterday. I gather each baked potato is about four sins. So four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So 20, 20 sins baked potatoes. Two medium Yorkshire puddings. They're about four each. The vegetables, but they were cooked in butter. There was a bread roll. I don't think it would... It can't be 200, surely, dear. But it was a meal out with the family. What can you do? So today, once again, I've worked it all out. I won't be having any sins today or tomorrow morning before I go and have my way in tomorrow. I think that, I think that's good. I think that's good. So I think, I think I've done very well this week. Now and again, you can go out for a meal. The truth will be told tomorrow, boys and girls, at the weigh-in at Slimmer's World, 11.30 in Wokingham, with the lovely Linda. I shall be cycling there tomorrow morning, and I shall give you a full report on our now almost regular late-night Tuesday show. Our late-night Tuesday show. We do a late-night Tuesday show generally now, uh, every week which is generally on Tuesday night sometime between 11, uh, 11, AM, uh, sorry, 11 p.m. and 12 midnight. So then I give you the updates on the Slimming World and all that. So that was lovely. Uh, I left there with some more speeches. Then I left there. It was so lovely to see everyone. It really was. You know, uh, years ago, we all used to meet up on Boxing Days. Everyone would go round to generally Uncle Terry's house or Uncle John's house because they had. Been, we didn't have a big house. We lived in a, a council place in uh, Roehampton. So when we went to people's houses for Christmas, well, it was just like going in the countryside. It was lovely. And um, to get everyone back together again, well, I, I don't suppose that will happen again before, you know, a, a, a few more have, have gone, gone upstairs. But it was so nice yesterday. It really, really was.
So that was my day yesterday. Uh, came back here. I didn't manage to get my two hours sleep, unfortunately. I think I got about 45 minutes sleep and then I went to work. Uh, did karaoke at the Cams and I. <clears throat> I've made, I made a new poster for that, which you'll see on my wall somewhere. Um, and a lovely night at the Camden Eye. A quiet start, to be honest, a quiet start. But it got busy. It got very busy, actually. And then eventually we had to stop taking requests because we got so busy. Uh, that was 8 till 11, finished about... Uh, we actually finished around about a quarter to 10 to 11. That's when we usually finish. Doesn't go quite to 11 o'clock. Packed up, in the car, come back here. I uh, had a cup of tea, cleared up after the cat, put the bin out for the man this morning and went to bed. Got up and here I am chatting away to you this morning. So that was my last, uh, that was my lovely, not my last weekend, I hope not. <laughs> Wasn't a Toby Carvery, no, Adam. But it was very similar. It's It was very, very similar. Christina says, why is it that no one ever eats before weigh-ins? Well, I do. I do. I didn't say I wasn't going to eat before weigh-ins. Oh, no, you can't. That's just silly because you're cheating, aren't you? It's a waste of time doing that. Uh, I have uh, usually, in, my breakfast is usually a tin of baked beans in the morning now. That's what I have. Although I did have, I found some bran flakes that I had left over. So I had a small bowl of those yesterday. But bran flakes are like four sins. Not good. Bran flakes are not good. You're better off to have a tin of baked beans, you see. Beans, beans. The more you eat, the more you know that one. Yes, thank you. Um, good. So that was my day. All right. OK, boys and girls. Now we're going to do because uh, I've got to disappear now. All right. We're going to do birthdays. First of all, I'll do today's birthdays. Um, oh, <clears throat> just a couple of messages from yesterday's show. Dan, we were talking about polls and all that, you know, election polls and what have you. I used to work in market research and quite often the questions are loaded depending on who is commissioning them. For example, when the pro-hunting lobby commissioned a survey on fox hunting, the question was, in order, what is more important to you, the NHS, child's education or ban on fox hunting? It was my job to monitor calls. I would say 80% of the people said all three, but there was no option for this. A few months later in the press, there was an article related to the findings that said a survey suggested people did not care about the ban. I see, you see, so Darren writes that in. Thank you very much, Darren. It's interesting to find out sometimes how some of this stuff works, isn't it, really? Um, Matt, good morning, Matt, uh, says, I've had a few people unfriend me <clears throat> as they said they couldn't be a friend with someone who didn't support Jeremy Corbyn. Oh, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? Let me tell you, if people are on the internet and they say unfriend me because you don't agree with me, they're not friends anyway. Get rid of them. Just get rid of them. Get rid of them. Don't want to know them. They can go and live in their sad own own little bubble where they don't accept everyone's comments. It's just ridiculous. Ridiculous, stupid. I'm sorry, stupid people. There's so many stupid people now who hate you because you don't agree with everything that they agree with. They are pathetic and stupid and they have no business talking to you, darling. Just get rid of them. And uh, Graham says, if Nicola Sturgeon resigned, I suppose she could always go back to her, her old career as one of the crankies. <laughs> Isn't she awful? In some circles, known, and I'm not being personal here, I'm just passing on the information. In some circles, Nicola Sturgeon is known as the Poison Dwarf. <laughs> Do you remember the Poison Dwarf on, on, on Dallas? <laughs> oh Nicola Sturgeon, the Poison Dwarf. Well, come on, let's do these birthdays. I'll do today's birthdays. And yesterday's birthdays as well. First of all, Eric Wiltshire. CEO of RTI International. One moment, please. Ooh. A cup of tea that's an hour old is stone cold and not very nice. I must remember that. Uh, Eric Wiltshire. Happy birthday to you, Eric. Hope you're having a wonderful time over there in Slovakia. Is the weather nice there? Have you got really hot weather? We haven't got... I mean, it's all right. It's. I can walk around in a T-shirt, but it's not baking hot. Actually, it's quite nice like this. Happy birthday, Eric. Um, Richard Byrne, a.k.a. Titty LeCamp. Happy birthday to Titty LeCamp. How are you, sir? Drag queen, one of my favourite people, actually, on the drag queen circuit. Uh, Titty LeCamp, Richard Byrne, happy birthday to you, sir, today, all right? Another drag queen this morning, Tom Jenkins, 38 years old. Lots of, uh, is it like drag queen month for birthdays or something? Happy birthday, Tom, 38 today. And happy birthday to Andrew Jackman 
also 38 years old today. Happy birthday, Andrew. Um, yesterday's birthdays, because I wasn't with you yesterday's. We'll do those as well today. Uh, Tim Ryan, cousin Tim Ryan, who's in Australia. Tim is the son of Auntie Marion, who told me off yesterday for making the children, and I quote, too excited. Happy birthday, Tim. <laughs> Happy birthday to my very, very good friend, Jacob, who I know he's... Uh, uh, over in Israel at the moment. Happy birthday, Jacob. Always, You've always said one of the best-looking people on my Facebook. You really are. Happy birthday, Jacob. Happy birthday to Michael Darton. Happy birthday, sir. All right, Michael. You like show tunes and all that. Uh, Joe Kelly. Happy birthday to Joe Kelly. 57 years old yesterday. Bev Edelstein. Uh, one of our lovely, lovely Manilow girls. It's Bev in the house today. It's a miracle, a true blue spectacle, a miracle is you. Ooh. Du, 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 du. Ooh. <laughs> I love it. Bev, are you coming over to London next year for the Manilow Concerts in 2018? Happy birthday, Beverly. Uh, Mark Mitchell. Hello, Mark. Happy birthday to Mark. I've worked with him so many times. He's uh, not in London anymore. He lives up north, don't you? Happy birthday, Mark. Uh, Martin Cave. Uh, he is co-owner of Rainbows, where I DJ'd for about three years up in Coventry. Uh, the journey got to me in the end, so I had to leave there. But uh, an all-round nice guy. Martin Cave, it was his birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. Uh, Clarence. Clarence Clackers. Rivori who I work with at Belushi. She was management there. Don't know what you're doing now, Clarence, but happy birthday to you. Bon, bonjour, mon ami. She's French. Lovely girl, Clarence. Happy birthday, Clarence. Tony Harrison. Happy birthday, Tony Harrison. And Ian Marrox. Happy birthday to Ian Marrox. Marrox, here comes the song. <laughs> Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, boys and girls. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful birthday, whatever you're doing. Now, it's a Monday night. Ah, uh, just Adam's sent in a la la last message. Adam says, never a good idea to eat, to under eat. It will track your body. I'm not getting enough food and then body will store the fat. Ah, Ah, OK. Well, I am eating enough. I just try to eat um, sin-free foods now. I do try and eat sin-free. And there will be no sins this morning, Adam. Can't wait for the weigh-in tomorrow. That's it for the show today. Being a Monday night, I'll be hosting karaoke this evening, boys and girls. It's karaoke tonight at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross, every Monday night. From 8 o'clock to 11.30 in the evening, OK? So tonight and every Monday, do join us for free entry karaoke at Central Station Bar, Wharfdale Road, King's Cross, 8 to 11.30, and cheap drinks as well every Monday. Uh, enjoy your Monday. Thank you very much for watching and listening to the show today, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye now.